So here are my top 10 automation trends for 2021. But if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, subscribe down below, click on the bell to make sure you get alerted every time I release a new video to help you with the automation testing efforts. As you know, because of COVID-19 pandemic, more and more companies are moving digital. So this buzzword of digital transformation, I think really picked up in 2020. And this has only accelerated digital transformations, causing everyone to pour everything over to either an app or software to be able to interact with their customers. This in turn has increased the amount of software that needs to be tested. Apply Tools recently did a study where they showed that more and more companies are moving towards digital transformation. It's becoming harder and harder to maintain quality because on average, they need to test 300,000 pages and screens for a typical app. If you work for a large enterprise, you probably have more than one app that you need to test. That's staggering, right? So enter the need for more automation in the new year. So my number one trend I see for 2021 is more automation testing. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna talk about all the types of automation you're gonna to need to know to help you succeed in 2021. So make sure to watch all the way to the end. So my second trend for 2021 is accessibility testing. As I mentioned, with more and more companies going digital, there's a need to be aware of creating software that's accessible to all our customers. And the need for accessibility testing will be greater in 2021. So more folks now than ever that have disabilities are relying on digital services in order to do all types of things like healthcare, retail, uh, work remotely, healthcare, banking, shopping, all those types of things. So all the different types of software our teams are creating need to be accessible by all our customers. I've also spoken to a lot of different testing experts on my podcast, and all of them bring up accessibility testing as a major need for testers to know as well. So I also use that as a signal. I speak to a lot of people on my podcast, and when more than one guest bring up a topic over and over again, I take that as, wow, this is probably a trend I'm gonna need to work on in the coming year, and accessibility testing is one of those trends. So 2021, I see more and more companies jumping in and investing in accessibility testing. COVID-19 has also caused the acceleration of everyone moving towards more cloud-based solutions that have really proliferated in 2020 due to the pandemic. So my third trend is focusing on learning all things cloud-based for software development and testing. And based on my research, I found an article on pwc.com where they said cloud spending rose 37% to $29 billion during the first quarter of 2020 and and this trend is most likely going to persist in 2021 as the transition to virtual work underscores the urgency for scalable, secure, reliable, cost-effective off-premise technology. Even if there's a vaccine, I don't see people going back to work in 2021 like we used to. And a lot of companies have actually seen the benefits of remote work. I won't go off on a tangent, but I'm a big believer in remote work. And uh, so... Anyway, I don't see this changing in 2021 or in the future. So definitely you want to get involved in more cloud-based software development and testing. And according to Gartner, cloud spending is estimated to rise 19% for all of 2020 and see that continue in 2021. So to me, this signals a need for us to shift our focus to how we're going to handle cloud-based development and testing. And I think automation is going to be one of the key drivers for this transition. So with the need for more automation, I think we'll see a trend for more companies needing to use cloud-based hosting, web, and mobile application automated testing solutions like Sauce Labs to run against all the different devices that customers are now using to interact with our software. If you haven't already been creating automation that can be run in parallel against different devices and different browsers, I think 2021 will actually highlight a dire need for you to get on this right away as we're gonna to have to test all these different types of ways people are accessing our software. And I've been harping on this for many years. I think this is also gonna highlight a need to automate not only functional tests, but also non-functional tests. So we already talked about accessibility testing. I think there's gonna be a great need to automate some of that. Of course, not everything can be automated, but what can should be. So accessibility testing, security testing, performance testing, chaos engineering. There's all these other types of automation I think are gonna be needed as we make this transition towards more cloud native type application software development and testing for sure. And this only opens the door for more cloud-based automation and collaboration tools to foster the spirit of agile development for remote teams. 
So this brings me to my fourth trend, and that's cloud-based collaboration tools. So examples of some cloud-based collaboration tools that will bloom in 2021. I've been talking about visual validation for a while. I think visual validation tools really allows teams to leverage both AI and human thought to collaborate to verify that software that they're creating is functioning in a way that they expect. Like I said, as we run against all these different devices and browsers and sizes, we need to make sure that not only is it accessible, people that have issues with hearing and, and sight, but also for any type of user because you want your application to look and be able to interact with it correctly without having other elements overlaying other things that make it hard for people to interact with your website. So visual validation, I think, is only going to rise. Also, Apply Tools has been invested in newer technology that makes it quicker to run against all these different devices and platforms really fast. So they have something called the ultra fast visual grid, which I think is really going to take off in 2021. Basically farms out all these different screenshot jobs to a grid of browsers in the cloud to generate images of web pages on all the browser types, the viewport sizes and emulates devices that a tester requests. So it's gonna be a big time saver. Also, not only paid solutions, but I've been seeing other open source solutions as well. So you see have tools like Selenium Base and Visual Regression Tracker starting to add visual testing functionality to their features as well. And also I think the ability to be able to work with one another on remote teams require test tools that are also cloud native. One application I've seen that's done this pretty well is called testproject.io. It's a free test platform that has made collaboration and community one of its core principles of their particular platform. Having tools like this, having all your digital assets in one place living in the cloud makes it easier for everyone on your team to collaborate on automation, having everything in one central location. It also gives you the ability to create custom add-ins for common functionality that you're writing over and over again to basically make it a function that you could share among your team members so you can share common functions rather than starting from scratch every time. So if I'm working on a Sprint Team A and Sprint Team Z is dealing with the same issue, they can look into my project and go, oh, Joe already wrote a solution for this. Let me just pull us in. So it'll foster that type of collaboration, which, which I think is going to be critical as we work more and more remotely. And like I said, I don't think this is going to change anytime soon. Uh, Working remotely, I think, is going to be the new norm. So you're going to need these type of collaboration tools. So this brings me to AI-based software assistance. Now, I know we've been talking a lot about AI in testing, but I think once companies get used to cloud-based development, I think there will be an increase in usage of AI cloud-based platforms like, like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, my, uh, Google Cloud, and IBM Watson Cloud. So with more users on our software and the need to satisfy all the customers' wishes or questions, I see smart AI powering tech-like conversational AI chatbots, uh, something more like customer sentiment analysis, machine learning, speech recognition technology, those type of features becoming more common in 2021 and beyond. I might be a little early on this, but I think that's really gonna take off. You also see this with test solutions, but there's other uses as well, other than functional automation. For example, IBM has engineering requirements quality assistant that uses the power of Watson AI to improve the quality of engineering requirements as you write them. So I think it's a great use for AI uh, to assist teams as we start our journey towards cloud native as well. Now, my sixth trend I see is automation pipelines, not automation scripting. And I've been speaking to a lot of different testers on my podcast. I've been interviewing a lot of them on my on my online conferences. And I think long gone are the days where you'll be known as an automation engineer that writes Selenium tests. Like I'm a Selenium test automation engineer. I actually think those days are, are, are behind us. And it's gonna be more towards, not only can you write automation scripts using Selenium or RPA tools or any type of tool, Cypress, but also you're gonna be responsible for doing more automation from a team-wide perspective so more automating a full pipeline of your software development lifecycle. So as a automation engineer, you're gonna be expected to really automate CI, CD tasks. So you're gonna to need to know how to help your team with these. It's not just gonna be someone else's job on DevOps to take care of it. So you're gonna to need to know how to actually automate the full end-to-end -end pipelines that your company needs from development all the way to production, all the type of activities that need to be automated. 
So I think actual functional testing is going to be a very small piece of the activity you're going to need to know in 2021. So definitely, if you're just focusing on Selenium or the small slice, I would highly recommend you take it up a level and look at any other way. I like to call automation awesomeness, being able to automate any type of activity that can help your team produce quicker software faster with higher quality. It may not just be a functional test. It could be automating your infrastructure, automating a security test, automating performance testing, any of those types of activities, um, helping with monitoring, automating gathering of the data, all those type of things in the automation pipeline, all the way through from beginning to end, you're going to need to know. So you may be thinking, hey, where do you get that from? Well, once again, some key signals I see is if you've seen Selenium 4, uh, a lot of the functionality built into Selenium 4 isn't necessarily functional automation specific. So a lot of the new functionality added was actually things like upgrading the Selenium Grid architecture to easily support technologies out of the box for containers, technology like Kubernetes clusters, AWS Cloud, Azure. So as a tester, you're going to need to be able to understand orchestration software for deploying, managing, and scaling containers and how to incorporate in your CI CD pipelines. Also baked into the new grid in Selenium 4 is uh, something called Open Telemetry, which allows you to do distributed tracing. This is going to be a game changer as more and more companies go cloud native using microservices type architectures and systems are going to become more and more complex. So this is going to actually lead to more failures becoming more common, but unfortunately harder to debug. And this brings me to my next trend. I think it's number seven. It's observability. So one term I heard over and over again in 2020 and also 2019 is observability. So the Wikipedia observability description or definition is in control theory, observability is a measure on how well internal states of a system can be inferred by knowledge of its external outputs. So what the heck does this mean? Uh, I've heard Testing experts like Abby Banks are explaining observability from a tester's perspective as access to data, which they call telemetry, that is both relevant and explorable. So to me, it's really just information that gives you visibility into your system on what the heck's happening at any given point in time. Actually, Honeycomb IO, which is an observability tool platform, explains it like this. When environments are complex as they are today, simple monitoring for known problems doesn't address the growing number of new issues that have been arising. So there are new issues that are these unknown unknowns, meaning without an observable system, you don't know what's causing the problem and you don't have a standard starting point of graph to find out what's happening. Having an observable system means you have the instrumentation you need to understand what is happening in your software. It may sound kind of odd if this is the first time you're hearing about observability. So I always recommend you get your hands dirty. And the great way to do that is to use the new Selenium grid. Try using their open telemetry API functionality to get your hands dirty and get some experience with it. So my number eight trend for 2021 is API end-to-end -end monitoring. I've been talking about API testing automation for years as a trend. But I think this year, this trend is going to continue and expand into actually the need to understand not only how to automate APIs and API tests, but how to actually leverage that information for monitoring purposes as well. And one of the key indicators I always see is companies, what they're investing in. So recently, I think this December, 2020, Sauce Labs acquired API Fortress. And to me, this is a signal that they are seeing a need for this type of activity in the marketplace and that you should know it as well as an engineer because when a company invests in something, most likely they're putting money behind it. If they're putting money behind it, they're probably getting validation from the market that there's a need for it. If there's a lot of companies asking for it. It means there's probably need people in the organization that knows it as well. So that's why I think you should be investing in it also if you're a tester. And in fact, Sauce Labs press release mentioned that the acquisition addresses a critical need for customers by enabling them to quickly, easily, and continuously test the API endpoints that make up the core of their modern API-driven applications. I've also spoken to companies on my podcast like Checkly that has a solution that does this. You should definitely check it out. Also, uh, Deep Factor, they recently came out with a continuous pre-production observability platform that provides security, performance, and behavior visibility seamlessly integrated into the CI CD pipeline. So you can find and fix at runtime security, compliance, behavior risk in custom and third-party code within DevOps pipeline. So this is definitely a trend. I'm going to see more and more tools coming out or solutions. So definitely should be 
a good thing for you to know it as well. So my ninth trend is AI data. So we talked a lot about cloud native, uh, a lot of this automation running in parallel against all these devices, running against different infrastructure, running against AI-based, cloud-based solutions. A lot of the stuff is gonna produce a lot of data. So how do you handle it? So all this cloud-based activity, automation testing, logs, reports, results, and observability produces a lot of data that you're gonna to have to comb through. How are you gonna test this or deal with this as a tester? I think we're gonna actually see a rise in predictive QA automation using tools and languages that work easily with AI and data. So tools like, or languages like R, Weka, uh, Python, Apache Spark. Actually, Python was on my list of trends for 2020, and I think it was spot on. I think it's also very useful, not only for automation, but also useful for AI and data. If you look at the TIOBE or TIB index, which is a really common index that measures the popularity of programming languages every year or every month. It's a chart that they put out every month also. Uh, you could see an increase in the usage of Python. I think it shot all the way to number three this year. And as, I, as I'm recording this, I think they rated it or named it the fourth, for the fourth time in a row, the most popular programming language or top programming language of the year. So if you haven't already, Definitely check out Python to help you with your AI data. So once again, not necessarily automation from a functional automation perspective, but being an automation tester now is gonna move away from automation test scripted to more of an automation engineer that's gonna encompass more of this data science infrastructure automation type activity. So if you are a hardcore automation engineer, you're probably thinking, where are the tools, Joe? Where are the automation tools uh, that, that, that we use every day as automation testers? Well, the one tool I saw a big upshot in 2020, everyone's been talking about it, is Playwright. Playwright is kind of a fork of Puppeteer, but it was taken over by Microsoft. There's a whole team there. I actually spoke to the manager of that program at Microsoft for Playwright and asked him why he created it. And the reason why he said is as we come out with newer and newer technology, they needed a solution or a testing solution that fits seamlessly into our modern type of development processes. So as we're being asked to create software, not only faster and faster, but also with quality baked into it, you need a way that can quickly validate your code, but at the same time, not slow down the development process. Because this headless testing has become more popular, and let's face it, headless automation is faster to execute, and actually, typically, it's easier to create as well. And I've seen more and more companies embrace playwrights. So anytime I see companies embracing an open source technology or a, a technique and coming up with solutions on top of it as well. I see this as a single as something I should get more familiar with also. So I've seen companies like Testum came out in 2020 with something called Playground, which is a free recorder for Puppeteer and Playwright that creates UI-based tests as code for you. And actually Checkly is another company that came up with a headless recorder Chrome extension that does this as well. So Playwright like I said, is definitely on an uptick and more and more developers are embracing it. So as developers embrace it, you as a tester are gonna to have to know it also. And I think there's a lot of cool functionality that you can get out of headless automation that you can't get with GUI-based automation. So those are my 10 automation trends for 2021. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, subscribe, hit the bell down below to get alerted every time we release a new video. And if you really want to accelerate your automation efforts in the new year, I highly recommend you check out my annual online Automation Guild, which is an online event dedicated 100% to helping you succeed with creating what I like to call automation awesomeness. And it's an online event dedicated to helping you learn a tip, tool, technique, a best practice that's going to accelerate your automation in the new year. If you haven't already, register now. Head on over to automationguild.com and register today. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.